So on November 12th, 2021, Dave Rubin decided that it would be a good idea to go on Twitter.com and say that while he knows many people who regret getting the vaccine, he doesn't know anybody who regrets not getting the vaccine. Back at Lakeland Regional, Dr. Eskowitz says 95% of COVID patients are unvaccinated, something some of them wish they could change. They're on oxygen. They don't know whether they'll live or die, whether they'll get better or not. Um, and we have numerous patients that come in uh, and full of regret that they, they didn't take that step and get vaccinated. You had a fever. You had a sore throat. You had bad congestion. You lost your sense of smell. You lost your sense of taste. You thought you were going to die. See. It was that bad. In Spanish, he says he's thankful to God he's alive, that he survived. He wishes he had gotten that shot. 39-year-old Michael Freedy, a father of five, died in Las Vegas here last week. One of his last texts to his fiance was, I should have gotten the damn vaccine. A small fever, sick for a day, is better than having your loved ones have to bury you. All of our COVID patients are unvaccinated that I've taken care of. And it's just, it's so disheartening that these families are so sad and they all ask, well, what could I have done? Will the vaccine save them now? No, but you could have done that before. He struggled to breathe, but he wanted to keep talking to share this message. As soon as I can, I'll get the vaccine. And I highly recommend anyone who has it to do it because this is a very scary situation. Do you regret not getting the vaccine? Absolutely. I 100% regret it. Specifically, what were some of the things you were hearing? That the vaccine was not a real vaccine, that uh, it was like a tracking chip the government was trying to use on us. And since we met, Patrick took a turn for the worse. He was placed on a ventilator and died. In just one week, Patrick would have turned 25. He now leaves behind a young son. Harrison said he was always careful, but in his words, he kept dragging his feet and never got the vaccine, even after his wife, who's a nurse, told him to get it. Do you regret not taking the vaccine? I regret it. It's just an answer that I'll never know, and many of us will never know. But it just, it minimum, at least it minimizes your chances of getting sick. You know, so I, I do have some regrets there. I didn't listen to my wife. I didn't listen to my sister. We were talked to by some of our supervisors, and they begged us to get our shots. And I, and I told them I wasn't getting my shots. Well, here we are one year later, and I have never been so sick in all my life. I cannot describe to you how sick I got. A Washington family grieving the loss of Patrick Lane, a father of two who recently died of COVID at the age of 45. Patrick was not vaccinated. His final words to my stepmom on a FaceTime call was that he wishes, he wished that he was vaccinated. It's heartbreaking. Every patient here, unvaccinated, that's sick, regrets it. It is so hard to watch somebody in their last week of their life, last days of their life, know that it's at their decision. It's at their decision they made to be in this in this room, in this bed, and know that they're probably not gonna make it. It's by uh, Charles Fishman. He says, once again, U.S. hospitals are filled to overwhelmed with people desperately ill with COVID-19. You know what is not happening? Not one hospital is filled with people suffering the side effects from the COVID vaccine, not one. I don't know why this wouldn't make sense to people. To me, this is two plus two is four. Even the people who are saying don't get it are dying. Over 5 million people have died of COVID. Majority of the people on the planet who have died of COVID were in fact unvaccinated. And there's just a whole world out there outside of Dave Rubin's personal friend group. I don't know why people have such a hard time seeing beyond their own experiences when it comes to this, but we're seeing this a lot. We're seeing a lot of people who said, I didn't think it was such a big deal when millions upon millions upon millions of other people that I don't know were dying. But once I landed in the hospital, oh my God, that's when I figured out it was a big deal. I didn't realize it was a big deal until somebody that I knew personally 
got sick. But up until that happened, didn't give a shit, didn't take it seriously. For some reason, he thought he was immune from COVID-19. He didn't think it would get it. But you got it. And was admitted to Providence Holy Cross Hospital on July 7th. Why didn't you get vaccinated? Porque, um, yo no lo tan necesario. Besides thinking it wasn't really necessary, he says he believed friends who said if he got vaccinated, the government was going to put something in his body to track him. He got really sick. When the COVID first come out, there were several of us, multiple of us, that knew nobody that the first round affected. This patient, like most others here for COVID-19, had not been vaccinated. Why was it again? Did you have a, a, a reason not to, or you just never got around to it? She didn't think it was necessary. There were, of course, a lot of people saying, um, I think that the people who regret not taking the vaccine might be unavailable to comment. This is survivorship bias. People who might regret getting the vaccine are alive to express their regrets, while people who might regret not getting the vaccine, they're dead. They can't comment anymore. I would like to say though, there is a large spectrum when it comes to getting COVID. Sometimes I feel like we either talk about people who get COVID are completely asymptomatic, they're fine, they have no long-term effects going on, they're able to live their life normally after that point, and then people who get it and die, game over, Done. But you know, there's a lot of people who fall in between. They get sick and they are disabled by the virus. They didn't die, but they were hospitalized and they had to be put on a ventilator and they have long-term effects with their heart, with their lungs. Some people have needed lung transplants in order to survive this. I do think that we have to take that into consideration when it comes to people who might regret not getting vaccinated. And I do think that we also should acknowledge that there are people who don't get vaccinated, not because they're anti-vaccine, but more they're vaccine hesitant, they're procrastinating, they don't have the time to get vaccinated. Anyone can come here and get vaccinated, like everywhere else in the U.S. A vaccination is as easy to get as a cough drop. They don't have time to like walk 10 minutes to their nearest Walgreens and then get a shot and be out of there in 15 minutes. That's, that's too time consuming, but apparently getting hospitalized is not too time consuming. But yeah, like sometimes people just find out the hard way of, I didn't prioritize getting vaccinated. Maybe I should have. So there's a lot of those stories, the stories that really oh, get to me. I do really worry about the children who are growing up now without parents, without one of their parents or without both of their parents because their parents decided not to get vaccinated. She's four months old. She hasn't had a first Christmas. and She's not gonna have that with her dad. You sweet baby. Catherine Brooks is now a single mom, raising her four month old baby girl Carter without her husband. When I got vaccinated, I tried to get him to get vaccinated. At 42 years old, Will Brooks wasn't concerned. So if you are not new here and you have in fact seen me before, you may know that it's been a while since I've last posted a video. I mentioned this before in my community tabs, but I am in grad school now, so I am busy trying to focus on being a good student and getting good grades and all of that. So that's one of the reasons why I've been absent from YouTube. Also, this this whole situation is so frustrating to me. I'm just frustrated that we've gotten to the point where we allow misinformation to equal medical science. There's so many angles that you can look at this anti-vaccine topic because one, there's the health argument. There's the, I'm not overweight, I'm not obese, therefore I don't need to get vaccinated argument. The 43 year old thought about the life insurance policy he took out a month earlier for his two kids and how he tested in the 99 percentile for being healthy. I was just shocked that this thing could hit me like that. It got so bad, he asked if he could be on a ventilator. I'm very confused by people who use booster shots as like a gotcha, like, oh, you thought you were vaccinated, but look, you're gonna get a booster shot, and I bet next year you're gonna have to get a booster shot. <gasps> Oh my God, I found out that I was eligible to get a booster shot on a Sunday and then I made an appointment for Monday after work and I walked to Walgreens, was out of there in 10 minutes. 
not a big deal at all. I don't understand why that's a counter argument to be used against vaccines. We could talk more about people who are vaccine hesitant over people who are anti-vax because I think that the people who are anti-vax, they have like the loudest voices, whereas the vaccine hesitant, maybe they're more passive. They're still trying to feel things out. They're not really sure. So then they could possibly be persuaded. You can talk about like people who are pro-choice in this sense, not pro-choice in a lot of other senses. We could talk about the religious angle with this. You will not wear masks in this church. You will not wear masks in this church. I'm telling you right now, do not get vaccinated. Do not get vaccinated. If this guy, Greg Locke, looks familiar to you, the first time I heard about Greg Locke was when Lil Nas X retweeted him. Bunch of devil worshiping wicked nonsense, pentagram wearing on your Nike tennis shoe 666. You think I'm gonna stand for that? You've lost your mind. You tell Lil Nas X I said so. Bunch of Satanism, bunch of wickedness, bunch of devilism, bunch of demonism, bunch of psychotic wickedness. Because as you know, the once again Grammy nominated singer, he made a music video which was nominated for a Grammy for best music video, which I think is hilarious. And a lot of Christians like lost their shit about that. But then a lot of people who are saying like, oh my God, the sky is falling because Satan shoes, the sky is falling because of this music video. They're like, pandemic? What pandemic? I don't fucking care about the pandemic. What the hell ever? Don't boycott church. Don't social distance at my church. We interviewed Locke in December 2020, when more than 4,900 Tennesseans had already died of COVID-19. He told us this. There's no pandemic. <laughs> COVID-19 is not a pandemic. But what is a pandemic then? Not what we're experiencing. So yeah, I just think that it's funny because you know, priorities and very similar to the religious angle, we could also explore the political angle. The point of mandatory vaccination is to identify the sincere Christians in the ranks, the free thinkers, the men with high testosterone levels, and anyone else who does not love Joe Biden and make them leave immediately. So I might have mentioned before that I'm not actually a big fan of Joe Biden like at all, but I got the vaccine as soon as I was eligible to get the vaccine because I didn't see it as me declaring my undying loyalty to the Democratic Party, my undying loyalty to Joe Biden. I didn't want to get COVID. I didn't want to get hospitalized or end up dead or to pass it on to somebody. When we talk about the political pushback against this, a lot of it is focused on Trump voters, not just Republicans, because yeah, Republicans are more likely to be vaccine skeptical than Democrats, but especially like Trump Republicans are more likely to be anti-vaccine, whatever. When it comes to the political pushback, it's not just like the Trump Republicans, it's people who are anti-establishment in general. So I am even noticing this with like people who supported Tulsi, people who supported Bernie. And on that note, Sean made an excellent YouTube video about Jimmy Dore. And in that video, he said this around 10 minutes in. Now, I know that the response to me saying Jimmy Dore produces anti-vaccine content will be to say, no, he doesn't. Dore doesn't directly tell anyone not to get the vaccine. He got the vaccine. And he says that you can get the vaccine if you like. You know, he's not anti-vaccine. He's just asking questions. He's just got some concerns. He's just reporting the vaccine news. Now, my question is, if this was true, if Jimmy Dore really was just innocently asking questions and provoking debate, why does he need to lie? Why is he selectively quoting the article to avoid mentioning the positive effects of vaccination? Why is he editing the text of the article to make lockdown measures seem ineffective? If he was just reporting the news, he would just read out the article in full, right? If he's just asking questions, why not ask, why does Singapore have one of the lowest COVID death rates in the world? And the answer is because Jimmy Dore is trying to present a biased view of vaccines. And every time I check back on that video to see how it's doing, I see time and time again, people who think that they are distributing brand new information that, oh, hey, didn't you know that this guy was vaccinated? You didn't make it 10 minutes into the video. My favorite video by Sean is the outrage news video, which speaks to an issue that we're gonna get around to. People who are being very hard-headed, not willing to like look beyond the title of a video and actually watch a video before jumping to conclusions. Like this again has been very frustrating for me. When it comes to COVID-19, as I mentioned before, 
millions of people have died worldwide, and then we have this vaccine, your likelihood of dying or being hospitalized, having any long-term serious illness that comes from having COVID-19 is dramatically reduced. And so if you are led to believe that the vaccine was not safe or was not effective, somebody else comes along and says, those arguments that led you to believe that the vaccine was bad, those arguments were wrong. Here, let me tell you why. You would think that people would be happy to figure out that, oh my God, you're telling me that if I don't want to get COVID, if I don't want to be hospitalized or end up dying, I can just go over to the pharmacy and get a shot and be on my way. If you didn't get Johnson & Johnson, you'd have to get another shot in three or four weeks, but it's cheaper than Regeneron. It's more convenient than Regeneron. It's more readily available than Regeneron or ivermectin or hydrochloroquine. So it's like, I don't know, like why would people be against hearing that? I haven't been too eager to make a video about vaccines because it's like, at the end of it all, there are people who just made up their mind that vaccine is bad and they don't wanna budge and they don't wanna listen to somebody telling them otherwise. Even when vaccine is good, should be good news that they should want to be receptive of. They should at least want to hear that out. I don't get it. That's, that's what's very frustrating to me is like, I don't get that. So I don't know how to respond to that. But hey, if you happen to watch this video all the way through, I very much appreciate you. Thank you for spending time with me today. Take this poll that's from my community tabs or just write in your comment, what's your opinion on this question? I would love to know. So take care, get the booster shot. If you haven't already gotten your booster shot, it's really not a big deal. A good rest of your year. Happy holidays and shit.